Just because we have hardware connected, here's my inbox, doesn't mean we're using it. So setup, playback engine, I have choices to not use it. Even though my inbox is connected, I could go to my built-in output and run the audio through my Macintosh instead of running it through the inbox. This is a very common issue with people new to Pro Tools. They can see the audio in the timeline, they can see it on the meters, and they don't hear anything. That's because it's routed to some other output. When you change the output, Pro Tools has to quit your session, make the change, and then reopen your session. When you open a session that was using a different hardware configuration, you'll get a window that says, you've changed your audio configuration. Do you want a detailed report? And the answer to that is almost always no, unless it's a surprise to you that the audio output has been changed. Most of the time you get that window because you're on a different system than you were on, and Pro Tools is alerting you to that fact. Back to setup and playback engine. I have choices for my hardware buffer size. The simple choice here is you want to use the one that's the fastest without compromising your sound. If I go to 32 in the regime that I've set up here with running the app, running the operating system, recording audio, and making movies at the same time, I'm probably going to get a glitch. I'm content with 256. Most of the time, that's going to be fine. Notch up if your system can handle it. Smaller is better, but not if it causes you a glitch. Now, these choices will be different on an HD system, and you won't encounter any latency, the difference between when the sound originates and when you hear it back after it's been processed. You won't hear that because the DSP, the digital sound processing, is being handled by chips on the HD boxes, and they're much more efficient than the ones in the MBOX. There's not a one-size-fits-all perfect setting that will always give you the perfect results. The best setting is going to be influenced by how many tracks you're recording simultaneously, how fast your computer is, and how many plugins you're using. Avid, like I, recommends that when you're tracking, use the lowest possible size that avoids errors. If you have the Ignore Errors During Playback and Record button checked, then you'll be getting errors, but you won't be hearing them, and that's not good. You want to be aware of what you're recording. You don't want the band to go home and then realize that all this time you've been recording unusable audio. We'll talk about this box when we get to the movies in Chapter 10, but this video engine is kind of a memory hog. If you don't need video for your project, I would disable this. I'm not going to disable it because it takes too long to reload if I need to. That's a way to optimize Pro Tools to get better performance unless you need video. Now, there's one gotcha that I've seen that I want to show you a good workaround for. Pro Tools 12 runs native on a Mac, but as of this title, if you're running on a PC, you still need an MBOX or you need an ASIO compatible sound card. There's one gotcha that can trap you on a Mac. If your playback engine is set for MBOX, but your MBOX is not plugged in, when you boot Pro Tools, you might get a pop-up saying, please reattach your MBOX. Pro Tools won't launch completely. In fact, this menu will be grayed out, but you can't reach in here and change it. In that case, hold down the N key, and as an engine, when you boot Pro Tools, and you'll be able to reset your playback engine from there without actually opening the program.